Hi, my name is Justin Soto, and for my project, I did it on transgenic aqua advantage salmon. So for some background information, Atlantic salmon is a species of anadromous fish that's long been a staple of aquaculture and cuisine around the world. Uh, anadromous means it spends a portion of its life in freshwater and a portion of its life in seawater. Interest in commercially farming salmon rather than fishing, fishing has risen greatly in the past century. However, this is relatively difficult compared to other species for many reasons, most prominently the amount of time it takes for the fish to reach market size. The salmon farming production cycle can last about three years, the first year of which uh, production takes place in controlled freshwater environments, and then the farm salmon are transported to seawater enclosures until they reach market size of approximately 100 grams. While it would be more convenient and economical to raise the salmon fully in captivity, their endodromous nature and long growth period make it difficult to sustain. A shorter growth period would make it far more feasible, however. This idea led Aquabounty Technologies Incorporated to create the first genetically engineered animal approved for human consumption, Aquabanish salmon. So Aquabanish salmon are transgenic Atlantic salmon with two key genetic differences. First of which is gene regulating production of growth hormone, which is taken from a larger related salmon species, Chinook salmon. Second is a promoter gene taken from the ocean pow. Now the ocean gene has a really unique adaptation. It can activate a gene to produce high amounts of antifreeze proteins in its bloodstream to survive in near freezing waters, which is pretty cool. By applying this promoter gene to the growth hormone producing gene, it creates an Atlantic salmon that matures to market size in nearly half the time of typical Atlantic salmon because it produces far more growth hormone. So as you can see here, uh, these are two different Atlantic salmon, one genetically modified and one not, uh, and they're about the same age of 18 months. As you can see, the growth difference is significant. The, adult, the uh, aqua advantage salmon can reach adult size in 16 to 28 months, as opposed to the typical 36 months. And in addition, they eat 25% less feed and can be up to 20% more efficient at converting that feed to body mass, which is not a negligible amount. Salmon was first genetically engineered in 1989 by microinjection of recombinant DNA plasmids into a fertilized egg. Aquabounty Technologies became interested in developing a genetically engineered salmon in response to increasing demand for fish protein in light of declining stocks and diminishing captures. Farming fish has many unique challenges compared to typical agriculture, particularly feed conversion efficiency and growth rate, as fish are much more slow growing than most mammals in some cases. Uh, Aquabanish salmon combats this by maturing nearly half the time with even less feed, as previously stated. The fish was approved for sale for human consumption by the FDA in 2015 and became available to the general public in last summer of 2021. Like with any genetically modified organism, Aquabanish salmon has been riddled with controversy for most of its existence. I believe my reactions to this may be stronger due to the fact that it's an animal as opposed to more commonly seen genetically modified plants, such as tomatoes and corn. Uh, because when it's an animal that's being modified, some people can relate to it a lot more as they see it like as a living, breathing thing. So it feels much more wrong to genetically modify that to some people. Critics have often referred to it as a frankenfish due to its genetic alteration and recombinant DNA, despite the fact that the fish is practically identical in every way apart from the two genes that previously discussed. Some concerns, however, are more found in reality, such as ecological and health concerns. Now for the health concerns, the FDA actually didn't approve the fish for nearly two whole decades, so testing could be done to prove that they were safe. Many generations of the salmon had been produced, and they were all thoroughly examined for negative health effects of the fish and on people. Uh, and the results show that no significant difference was ever found between the health of aqua advantage salmon versus regular salmon. The FDA stated it's just as safety as any other salmon, even though the people in this photo seem to disagree hardly. The primary ecological concern of most critics is, is the modified salmon escaping and outcompeting or even reproducing with wild salmon. Now, this could be a valid concern. However, it's actually a non-issue in practice for a few reasons. For one, the salmon are raised in farm settings exclusively, away from waterways to escape into, and there are many levels of biosecurity to ensure containment, like heavily filtered waterways and transport being monitored very carefully. But in addition, the salmon are all born as sterile females anyways, so the first point doesn't even really matter. The fish are a triploid hemozygous, meaning they have three complete sets of chromosomes as opposed to the typical two. This abnormal amount of chromosomes has no adverse effects on the fish, 
It only serves as a harmless way of making them incapable of reproducing without human intervention. Since it has different number of chromosomes, they just can't combine properly. It's, it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. So in conclusion, aquavanish salmon is an astounding achievement in commercial biotechnology, being easier to feed, grow, and profit from than typical salmon. The benefits are numerous, with little to no negative aspects, apart from the major one of it being pretty difficult to market. Uh, while the, the fish may still be a tough sale due to misinformation and fear on the consumer ends, I, I hope that the fish can eventually reach a point where more people are willing to buy it, making it more profitable as time goes on, and possibly even paving the way for more genetically engineered animals to exist that make production and profit easier. And there are my citations, and thank you for your time.